Hello, this is Chris, and today on Crazy Fabrications, I'm going to show you how I solder to a new heat bed. Let's go. So if you're like me and you like to build your own 3D printers or you like to repair old 3D printers that you have, you're going to eventually run into the day where you have a brand new PCB heat bed like this that needs wires attached to it. Well, I found this to be a real challenge, particularly when you're trying to attach the silicone wires to the heat bed and not end up with cold solders. I've come up with a method that seems to work really well that uh, takes the guesswork out of producing those solders. So I want to show you how it's done in this video tutorial. Let's get to work. So before we get started, let's take a look at the components you're going to need to do the job. First, of course, we're going to need a PCB heat bed. Uh, one like this one, I purchased this from Ziltech. I'll have the link in the description if you're looking for one. Make sure wherever you purchase it from, get a three millimeter thick one. It's going to be a lot flatter. It's going to reduce uh, warping on it. It's also going to uh, dissipate the heat better throughout the bed. You're also going to need a silicone mat, such as this one, a work mat, that is safe for soldering uh, so that we don't damage the table that we're working on. Next, we're going to need a couple of uh, regular tools. We're going to need a knife or a wire stripper. We're going to need some snips. We need the connectors that we're going to use to connect the wiring to the main board, as well as the crimper for those connectors. We're going to need solder, flux, our wiring that we're going to use, and then, of course, we're going to need a heat gun. We're also going to need a soldering iron. So, let's get started. So, the first thing we need to do, uh, this is silicone wire. I can give you a link to the one that I use. This needs to be at least 14 gauge for most heat beds to make sure that we don't burn the wires up. The silicone insulator is so that, number one, it's a much more flexible wire and this is going to be a moving heat bed. Uh, it also has a high uh, thermal limit on it so we won't melt it. So first thing, let's strip off what we need. I usually compare it to how big my contact is down here. So that's probably going to be a half an inch or, or maybe a centimeter and we're going to cut that off. Strip both of these wire ends to about the same length. All right, I'm gonna twist these a bit so that they don't fray on us. All right, now we're going to tin our leads here. Heat up the wire. Make sure, first of all, make sure on your soldering iron, use one of your larger tips. We're gonna need to dissipate a lot of heat here. Also, if you have a variable soldering iron, make sure I set mine for this particular project to about 300 C. I need a lot of heat and I need it fast. So I heat up the end of this wire and begin to just tin the, the end of this wire. We need a lot of solder ready to go on it. And then we're going to do the same on the positive lead. Yeah. Now once we've tinned those, we're going to also need to prepare our board. I have a little no clean flux. I'm going to actually put on the board so that the solder sticks better. Begin by heating up, and this should stick at first. Okay, I'm gonna put down a layer of solder. Do it on both of them. All right. Kind of smooth it out because it gives me a better place to work when I start soldering. All right, so now. This is where a lot of people have had plenty of luck just applying the leads to the heat bed. Now for me, I ended up, when I was trying to do this, I ended up with a lot of cold solders because the heat bed immediately wants to wick the heat from this while I'm working on it. So what I've learned to do is I grab my heat gun and I go ahead and prep the bed for the heat. So get my heat gun going. One thing I forgot to mention that you're also going to need, you're also going to need a uh, thermometer. I like the laser thermometer for this job. And I'm gonna to wanna to heat my bed to about 130 degrees Celsius. I found that that's just from testing. I found that if I get the bed to 130 degrees, then I have a little bit extra time to work to get things soldered up nicely. 
All right, I don't know if you can see that, but we're a little over 130 now. And then what I'm gonna do, after I take this off, I'm going to quickly grab my wire and grab the soldering iron, and I'm gonna solder it down. On this board, I want my red on the left. And hopefully you'll have a little bit of extra time to put some extra solder on there. Make it look nice. Once I got that one on there. If I have enough time, I might be able to get both. But a lot of the times the board cools too quickly. And we just have to start over again. It looks like we actually may get enough time this time. Let's see. There it goes. Starts to melt. Once it starts to melt, end up with a pretty good. Make sure you get all the strands in there. All right, and that's it. So there are other things you can do on these boards. There's a thermistor that needs to go in the center hole that can just be either taped down or glued down with some silicon glue. Uh, and if you want to, you can also put some LEDs here on the front of the bed. Again, not necessary. I've got LEDs in enough places where if those LEDs are going off, I'm not gonna be checking the one underneath the bed. So after you've done the actual heated bed part, we still have to put connectors on here to make it safe to connect to our main board. So I use these crimp style connectors. Check the length I'm going to need the wire. Strip that off. Twist. Same on the negative wire. And then I'm going to grab my crimp tool, put these on here, make sure that the wire is actually coming all the way out the end. I'm going to crimp that down once. All right, and do the other one. Crimp that one down also. There we go. All right, and then one last step I do on these is I do like to put a little solder in the tip to make this connection permanent. So I can do this on my heated bed, I can use some helping hands, whatever works for you. Put some heat on there. And then if I flow some solder in there, it'll actually flow directly into that wire. Then I can be sure that this connection is permanent and that this wire is not gonna pull out and that there's a good electrical connectivity between here and here. Same thing on our negative end. There we go. These connectors are all done. Uh, besides just attaching a thermistor to the center of this board, this project's complete. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. This was a process that I developed after reading some forums, after looking for some help on this, and the typical process is not working for me. So I wanted to put this out there. I hope this helps some of you. If you need any of the components that I featured in today's video, I'll include links in the description below. If you have any comments or suggestions for me about what I did right, what I did wrong, what I could do better, please leave a comment on that. I always read those and I appreciate the feedback. Again, thanks for watching me here on Curzy Fabrications. Keep fabricating.